చోట్ల పోతున్నాము ఫ్లోరిడాలో ఎవర్ గ్లైడ్స్ అనే పార్క్ లో ఇక్కడ ఇదంతా కూడా స్వామ్ వాటర్స్ మసాలు అంతా ఉంటాయి దీంట్లో ఎయిర్ బోట్ అని ఈ బోట్లు ఉన్నాయి వెనక పక్క పెద్ద ఫ్యాన్లు పెట్టి తిప్పుకుంటూ పోతారు ఎందుకంటే ఇక్కడ బోట్కి కింద మోటార్ పెడితే ఇది లోతు ఎక్కువ ఉండదు అనమాట స్వామ్స్ మాదిరిగా కాబట్టి కింద తగులుతుంది కాబట్టి అదిగాక కింద వాటర్ని అంతా కూడా అంత తిప్పుతుంది కాబట్టి ఇది రకరకాల బోట్స్ ఉన్నాయి ఇందులో ఇలా లోపల కూర్చుండే బోట్లు ఉన్నాయి ఇక్కడ పైన కూర్చుండే వీళ్ళు ఆపరేటర్ డ్రైవర్ ఉన్నాడు మా బోట్ ఏమో అన్ని బోట్లకి లోపలే కూర్చుండేదట్టు ఈ ఎయిర్ బోట్లో పోవడానికి సుమారుగా ముప్పై ఐదు డాలర్లు కట్టినాము టికెట్ ఎస్ బోట్ బయలుదేరింది ఏమేమి జంతువులు జీవులు కనిపిస్తాయో చూద్దాము ఇవంతా కూడా చాలా లోతు తక్కువ ఉంటాయి దీంట్లో చాలా మొసలు ఉంటాయి ఇక్కడ పడినామంటే ఇంకా వాటికి బఫే అని చెప్తున్నాడు ఆయన దుమ్ము లేపేస్తాయి ఇక్కడ అంతా కూడా బోట్ ఇట్లా ఉంది చాలా దుమ్ము లేపుకొని పోతాడు అంటే గట్టిగా పట్టుకొని కూర్చుందాం పడకుండా during out the speed trails let alone at any other location of the tour whatever went into the water becomes all facial property of the Everglades oh my god ed vanna kuda neellalo anta teedaniki ledanta avanti jagratha vadukon kosam nan cheptunadu na photo kuda gattiga vadukunnanu laate neella video vastadi meeku neella paind raakunda neella lobal vastadi and there is a very large box in front of the boat that box is full of life vests in case of an emergency that's where you're gonna go but you're not gonna need the life vest until you see me swim away from the boat first <laughs> లైఫ్ వేస్ట్ లో ఆడు ఉన్నాయి అంట బాక్స్ లో పెట్టారు పడిపోయిన తర్వాత మనల్ని మొసల్లు వచ్చి తినే లోపల ఆయన వచ్చి మనకి ఇస్తాడంట చూడాలి మరి చాలా స్పీడ్ కొడుతున్నాడంట గట్టి పట్టుకొని కూర్చుందాము ఇంజన్ పైన గాలితో ఎనక్కి కొడితే బోట్ ముందు పోతుంది అందుకని ఇలాంటి దాంట్లో డాడీ ఇంజన్ పెట్టినారు Every 
everybody, welcome to the beautiful Everglades. Everglades is also known as the Endless River of Grass. River of Grass. Grantha would get the full of grass. Chala Pedere, the Smarga, Nagarisoka, on the mile loon, the la. Samudram Nil and the Great Lodge Night and Nibuda. This location that we just entered is known as Vulture Island. Vulture Island, I got Vulture Sunday. The reason it's known as Vulture Island is oh, because chapel on the bed the chapel. There will be somewhere around 400 vultures wow. in this one location alone. Nature Conservative Park and Mata, Gadantoda, but a kind of channel of the Lake in the Ganapas and the already Bumi. Biting each other better than Nadu, crocodile such as this Conelipotai Chalantai, Copolopolo and Tai, Mosal and Nuda. There are two types of vultures here. The first type is the black vulture, which has a gray head. Then there is the turkey vulture, which has a red head. But adult vultures will not have a single feather on their heads, while the young vultures will have a full set of feathers on their heads. And as far as the young vultures are concerned, we won't know what type of vultures the young vultures are until they become adults and lose the feathers on their heads, revealing the color of their heads. The vultures are one of the most common birds here in the Everglades, but they help keep the Everglades clean. They'll eat any animal that's passed away from any natural causes, and also eat any animal that was left behind from a predator that did not finish his meal, leaving no evidence of anything ever being eaten let alone of anything ever dying. So, when you have a lot of people who are living in the world, they are living in the world. 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 Let's 
side of the boat, there's a couple of vultures just scattered across the branches right here. Ravandalu, kupal kupal na enna na jorane. Oh, yeah, my enna Now, right side of the boat, in a second, you're going to start seeing the vultures on your side. There's two right here on these branches, right here. And you'll see a couple more scattered across the branches, right over here. to enter our second ski trail. Oh, yeah, man. So yeah, please yeah. gather and secure your items. We're about to take off. Brenda, sorry. Take off. I don't know. Airport, the mule, punta, the thing. Gali, get your bag. Gonna put it on. Nada. This location is known as the Shiner Hall. It's because about 70 years ago, this location was filled with tiny little fish called Shiners. The Shiners are still here. What happened was that that tall grass that you see on either side of the boat, at some point that grass started shifting and moving around opening up pathways to other locations of the Everglades, giving the Shiners an opportunity to go deeper into the Everglades. So they're still here, just more spread out throughout the Everglades. side of the boat. That's the cattail grass. The cattail grass was introduced to the Everglades in the early 1900s. The cattail grass is very important to the Everglades because it is the uh, filtration system of the Everglades. It will filter out any natural toxins, and it will filter out any man-made toxins like gas or oil. These plants that you see growing straight out the water 
are the spattered dot plants, and they are related to the water lily. That's why they look so similar. But there are three ways to tell them apart. The first difference is that the water lily will lie flat on the water surface, while the spattered dot plant sticks out a few inches above water level. The second difference is that the leaf of the water lily is rounded off, almost like a perfect circle. Well, the leaf of the spattered dog plants is oval shaped. And the last difference is that the water lily will produce a beautiful white flower, while the spattered dog plants produces a beautiful yellow flower. you see the spattered dot plants in that general area, the water level is six feet or less. Wow. Majority of this location is below the six feet mark. It's about three and a half feet deep. More than a radagrant, I don't know. Ilanti, Ilanti. Mokalemo, Unte Mahanta, or a good lot under the ground, and I be About 65% of the canals here in Everglades, including the canal we're on right now, were dug out in the 1920s. Oh, well, you they were dug out from the 1900s to about the 1920s. They were dug out by a group of Army Corps scientists. They dug out the canals so in case to prevent the Everglades from over flooding and flooding the neighboring cities. Halfway through, they changed to a completely different project. Their second project was to dig out the canals so they can drain the Everglades and get to the land and use it for construction of homes and buildings. 
but the constant rainfall in Florida prevented that from happening. they dug out the canals, they made the canals the deepest parts of Everglades. The canals go from 35 feet to about 42 feet deep. In the deepest parts of Everglades, they were not altered by anybody in any way, go as far as 20 feet deep. Alligators have one of the most powerful bites in the animal kingdom. Its bite is measured at 2,000 pounds per square inch, making it more powerful than the great white shark's bite. Alligators also have 80 teeth, 40 on the top and 40 on the bottom. Shark bite is a power of the shark. All of the alligator's teeth, all 80 of them, are completely hollow. There's nothing in the middle of their teeth at all. Which means if they bite into something the wrong way, they can easily snap off a tooth. But alligators can regrow their teeth multiple times during their lifetime. <laughs> For a part, I had a Gatidan with a good day. Pagilipota enter, Pagilipota and Tagani, Malla and Mursala, Jivta Kalamlo, Ponisalo, Malla, Peruta and Tavati. Now, to point up and do the Penago problem, leather, dentist, which would also have some is what do alligators eat out here? Well, pretty much anything they see. Birds, fish, snakes, turtles. And once in a while, they will try to eat other alligators. Matter of fact, male alligators are known to eat their own young. The first is to go a whole year without any type of food. Of the second ability, is to go underwater and stay underwater on one breath for about six hours. Wow! Our gantalu, okasar gali will score. Our gantalu unta gantalu apala. Manam our second unta mo. The average size of a female alligator is seven feet, while the average size of a male alligator is eight feet. But there are some alligators that do get larger than the average size alligator. Perfect example is the dominant alligator of this area, which is at 11 feet and about 300 pounds. There is thousands of dominant alligators across the state of Florida, including the Everglades. But there are two requirements for alligators to be considered dominant alligators. The first requirement is size. It does need to be larger than the average size alligator. Second requirement is that it does need its own territory. Only dominant alligators have their own te territory, which runs somewhere between five to six miles. Because dominant alligators have their own territory, they're always in constant fights with other alligators. They want to take away their territory. What happens is that once an alligator becomes larger than the average size alligator, and wants to acquire its own territory, they'll travel to the nearest dominant alligator and challenge it to a fight over the territory. Once the fight is over, the alligator they lost will take off, while the alligator that won the fight will end up staying with the territory. 
alligator. There is an alligator. There is an alligator. Right, alligator. Left side of the boat, right there is an alligator. Hold on, let me re spin the boat around. Hold on. Right side, right over there. Left side, I'm going to show you the alligator in a second. Just let me spin the boat around. Last time on the left side, right there, guys. Now, as far as alligators fighting, I already mentioned that they fight over territory. But the other times alligators really fight amongst each other is over food. Regardless of what the food is and how it got there, they'll fight amongst each other until there's one alligator left to claim the food for itself. The lifespan of an alligator in the wild is somewhere between 30 to 50 years. But in captivity, like in a zoo or a habitat for alligators, they do tend to live a little bit longer, somewhere between 40 to 60 years. because they don't have any stress. They don't worry about where the next meal is coming from and they don't worry about if a predator is going to hurt or kill them that day. So they do have a stress-free life in captivity and still longer lifespan. Full speed was the land. The only things alligators really know how to do is eat, sleep, capture food, and avoid danger. That's it. Everything else is out of natural instincts and are things they do without even thinking about it. 
But that goes to show that out here in the wild, it's all about size, not brains. Because alligators are large with small brains. That still manages to be an apex predator. Just a few differences between alligators and, alli and crocodiles. The first difference is color. Alligators are black, while crocodiles are dark beige, almost like the color of wet sand. Second difference is the shape of their mouths. On an alligator, its mouth is short and rounded off at the end, while on a crocodile, it's wide at the base where it meets the head and comes to a point at the tip of their nose. And the last difference is temperament. Alligators are very lazy, easy-going animals, while crocodiles are very aggressive. Ladies and gentlemen, beyond this point, if we run across any wildlife, regardless of what type of animal it is, I cannot spin the board around and show both sides. So whatever you see on your side stays on your side. These trees that you see growing straight out the water are the pond apple trees. And that's because for six months they produce a fruit that looks like a green apple. By now, the fruit's already fallen off and will not grow back until late spring. The fruits themselves are known as swamp apples and they are not edible to us because they do have a toxin in them called narsic, which if you eat the fruit, it will cause seizure-like symptoms. Diamond Glades is 5,000 square miles and it is the largest ecosystem in North America. I do well a mile, I do well a square mile so that day. And the Everglades is not a swamp. The Everglades is the shallowest and slowest flowing river in North America. That white building directly in front of us is a water pump station. There's about 200 water pump stations scattered across the Everglades. Their main job is to help regulate and maintain the water level in the Everglades. But take your time, there's no need to rush. As we approach and get to the dock, do not try to grab or hold on to the dock. Just leave the dock alone altogether. And once we're at the dock, stay in your seats. I will let you know when to get out the boat. Hello. 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 Oh, she was like, hey,